Singleton is 30 miles per hour, but people are clearly going much faster than that. And here's the problem. From Beckley all the way down to Sylvan, there are no traffic lights to slow down drivers. All signs that this tornado ripped through the neighborhood. Let me show you something right up here. This sign means that police searched this house and there were no victims. But what's remarkable is that out of all 12 tornadoes that hit DFW, everyone survived. Parking is always a premium in the Greenville area for St. Patrick's Day. But this year, it's going to be even harder now that they've extended the no parking signs to Skillman Street. At each retreat, participants are given a vest to sign. These vests contain the names of survivors and of those who have lost the battle to cancer. Even the price of snacks are going up because gas prices are too. Last time 11-year-old Jessica Smith was seen here at her home was late Monday night. But tonight, we've seen the first possible sign of communication since her disappearance. It's not a typical day in the office for Denton Police Officer Gary Craig, spending his morning on board a freight train. This is the first time I've ever been on a train. I'm pretty excited about it. He's here because Denton PD is teaming up with Union Pacific Railroad to promote safety near the crossings. They call it Operation Lifesaver. We have an officer that's on a train and they're going back and forth through town and we're enforcing the violations that he's calling out. Sergeant Darren Briggs says there have been no collisions between cars and freight trains in Denton in the past 10 years and they'd like to keep it that way. It is a catastrophic event when a train hits a vehicle. Put in perspective, a train hitting a car is the equivalent of a car running over a tin can. Last year, there were nearly 2,000 railroad crossing collisions nationwide, and Texas led the country. <laughs> Special Agent Roger Roderick advises here. drivers to stop, look, listen, and live. And be careful to not violate any laws at railroad crossings. Fair to yield to the train, uh, stopping within 15 feet of a railroad track, not making a full stop. Denton traffic officers say racing to beat the train is very unsafe and could be deadly. It's not worth someone getting hurt. Uh, you're playing Russian roulette with your life or someone else's life. They hope this effort leaves a mark on these tracks. In Denton, Ashley Claster, NBC5. And I think we're pretty much through going through what we can and salvaging what we can. Less than 24 hours after a tornado hit Forney, three-year-old Connor Pierman only has one concern. He can't find his toy. Okay. What happened to your dinosaur? I don't know. Right up there. But for everyone else, including Sherry Enix, a bigger question is left unanswered. Are you kidding? They never found the bathtub? No. I was there. <laughs> I was there. When the storm first started, Sherry took cover in the bathtub with her grandkids right here. But once the tornado was over, they pulled Sherry out of the rubble all the way over here. But the bathtub was nowhere to be found. Her daughter is left confused and can't figure out what happened that day. Did she get sucked out of the tub? Did she flit? You know, did it flit? We don't know. All they know is Sherry is now a hero to three little kids. One of the children was Abigail Jones. She was so scratched and bruised, she had to go to the hospital. Another was Sherry's grandson, Lane Miller. And the last was Connor. I don't think I'd be alive if I didn't have done it. I don't know anything any different. You know, I don't know what would have happened if I wouldn't have gotten the bathtub. In Forney, Ashley Claster, Channel 8 News. Look at these stalks. They've eaten all the leaves off of it. D. Johnson has run into a pesky problem. We have grasshoppers here and they're just eating the plants like crazy. The North Texas cattle rancher says this summer is the worst he's seen in years when it comes to grasshoppers. Between the drought and the grasshoppers, it's just uh, beginning to devastate some of our fields around here. A mild winter and a warm spring could be reasons for the nuisance, feasting on his grass and hay crop and costing him money. To see the grasshoppers come after it and then you have to start spraying when spraying is expensive. And if you take a close look at the plants, you can really see how much damage these grasshoppers have caused. Here's a bunch right here, look at here. But some people are benefiting from the irritating insects. That's good stuff. Dennis Smith owns a farm store in Denton. He's selling more insecticide than ever before. Double what it was last year, maybe even triple. We're going through tempo like 
six or eight cases a day sometimes. And they won't stop at the ranches. No, it's the homeowner as well as the farmer. The people over in the city, in Dallas and surrounding areas, these grasshoppers are headed their way. In Denton, Ashley Claster, NBC5. I'm thinking there's a lot of stuff that could be, that could have the virus in it. Shirley Gothard is concerned. Very worried. For the safety of her grandkids. Mosquitoes tested positive for the West Nile virus just a few blocks from her Denton home. And the city of Denton does need to be doing something about it. The city bumped up its mosquito risk level to level four. We found the mosquitoes, they have tested positive for the virus, and to just make everybody aware of the situation. Ken Banks is Denton's environmental services director. He says conditions have been just right for mosquitoes to multiply. We had a relatively warm spring and a relatively wet spring. This is one of the two areas in Denton that tested positive for West Nile. And if you live around these areas, there are still some things you can do to protect yourself. To look around your home and try to find uh, any areas that might have water. To change out your bird baths every few days. Gothard is listening, checking her backyard for stagnant water. My little grandkids have a swim pool in the backyard. And we have toys. They have toys that could, you know, little buggies and stuff that could collect, you know, water also. Eliminating this water isn't the only thing she can do. Banks uh, says dress appropriately, bird. stay indoors around dawn and dusk, and wear repellent. It's advice that this grandma is taking to heart. Mine won't go out without it. No. In Denton, Ashley Claster, NTTV News. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Ashley Claster. Breaking news tonight in South Dallas. An armed robbery attack at an intersection on West Davis leaves one man dead and another injured. Well, the numbers are in. The results of the SGA presidential election just came into our newsroom within the last hour, and we do not have an SGA president. Police have arrested a former justice of the peace, Eric Williams, this man right here. He is being held on $3 million bond. The Texas Baptist men are heading to Missouri today in response to the Midwest Storm Disaster Zone. Together, they would be the largest airline in the country. U.S. Airways filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission yesterday to take over American Airlines. It looks like UNT business students have more motivation to study harder. One million dollars has been contributed to the program to help with study abroad scholarships. Well, the reward is now $200,000 for information leading to the Kaufman County murders. But some people say it's just not enough. But you can be exposed to world-class art and literature. In fact, UNT on the Square is hosting just such an exhibit. Our very own NTTV's Blaine Skiles is on the Square right now with more on the exhibit. Blaine. Thank you so much, Michael. Well, NTTV seed and herd reporter Taylor Lindholm had an interesting weekend. Definitely interesting. He had some crawfish and then saw some <laughs> alligator wrestling. <laughs> Taylor, please tell us what this is all about. I could definitely use some of that money. I think, I think we all could. <laughs> and I could buy some Mavs tickets. I went to a game this weekend and I had so much fun. And the Mavs won, so I was happy. And my bracket was happy. The Fighting Unicorns. What a sweet name for such an aggressive group of girls. I love it. So the rescue dog becomes the rescuer, returns the favor. What a good story. That is so nice. It just goes to show that a dog is man's best friend. Definitely. Well, thanks so much for watching NTTV Nightly News. Join us again tomorrow night at 6 here on North Texas Television. Have a great night. Thanks so much for joining us here on Channel 8. I'm Ashley Claster. Have a good evening.